What can the German OER community or the OER community in general learn from examples in other countries? We will hear about an example from New York and the example is called the Open Lab. We'll hear about that in a minute. We have three representatives from New York, from the CUNY. Maybe we start just by you introducing yourselves and the CUNY and the institutions we're working in. Uh, so we're specifically from the New York City College of Technology in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm Jeremy Sito and I'm from the Department of Biology. I have with me uh, Jill Belli from uh, the Department of English and Assistant Professor and uh, Kaylin CUNY of the Library. You started a project called the Open Lab, and I think it's interesting to know about the background first. Sure. So the Open Lab was created at New York City College of Technology, which is City Tech for short, and it's part of CUNY, which is the City University of New York, which is one of the United States' um, largest public institutions. It has 24 campuses throughout uh, New York City. And it's a really wonderful institution that has a historic mission of serving the population of New York City. So because of that, we have a commitment to providing as affordable and accessible an education as we can for as many people as possible. So we have a very diverse student body um, with students uh, hailing from a large number of countries, speaking many languages, many are non-native speakers of English. Um, the students don't always have access to the materials that they need to have their education. So with that context in mind, the Open Lab, which is City Tech's online digital platform for teaching, learning, and collaborating, actually was launched in fall of 2011. It came out of a Title V grant, which is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education, and it's primarily for Hispanic-serving institutions, and City Tech is a Title V institution. And the lab, um, excuse me, the grant was called A Living Laboratory, Revitalizing General Education at a College of Technology, and it was a larger institutional effort to bring general education curriculum and liberal arts to a primarily technology and applied um, school focus. We have a lot of STEM students, and we're really thinking about how to integrate general education across the curriculum. So the Open Lab was created as part of this. It was created by and for the City Tech community. It's using the open source software WordPress and BuddyPress. And um, it's been really wonderful because it's created a beautiful um, space that's virtual that our commuter students can really come together and collaborate across the campus. So we're located in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's really a, a very thriving, vibrant area, but lots of buildings crammed together, not a lot of space. Commuter students, so none of our students live at the campus, and they're all juggling many responsibilities. They have multiple jobs, many of them have families, some are attending part-time, many are non-traditional students, so older students returning back to campus, and we really don't have the physical space for these students to come together and really have the enriched academic experience where they can make connections with their peers, uh, work with faculty, and really have this type of collaboration. So the Open Lab provides that digital space. Um, just to give you a little bit more context about the scope of the Open Lab. So the Open Lab, uh, when it was launched fall 2011, the goal at the end of the grant, it was a five-year grant, was to have a thousand members at the end of five years. And actually after the first semester, there was already more than a thousand members. And we have actually now six years, six and a half years out, have just welcomed our 24,000th member. So there's really um, a great great uh, uptake and adoption and I think part of this is because of the community focused ethos and the fact that it's part of the community there. Maybe you can give us some examples. How does it look like when I come to the platform? What do people do there? Sure, and so I should say, um, hopefully there'll be a link provided, but the URL is openlab.citytech.cuny.edu. And because it is open by default, you can visit this site, and even if you're not a member, anybody can view most of the content there. The homepage is actually an aggregation of all the activity happening across the campus. So um, the Open Lab is made up of two parts. Uh, it has um, all of the groups, and we have four different types of groups on the Open Lab called courses, projects, clubs, and e-portfolios. So these are different types of spaces, courses primarily where faculty and student work in courseworks, um, e-portfolios and portfolios for faculty, which are personal sites for these uh, faculty or student where they can present their work, clubs, which are primarily student driven, and then projects, which is kind of a catch-all phrase for any type of thing, committee work, research um, that happens at the Open Lab. So all of these 
sites can be found on the homepage, but then the Buddy Press, the social networking, kind of brings it all together into an academic social network and networks our 24,000 plus community members so that people are not only connected to other people, but they're also connected to various projects, clubs, courses, and e-portfolios. Um, so you can kind of get a snapshot of the most recent activity. The homepage features some content that we on the Open Lab team provide for our members, but it also is a rotating uh, sense of the most active sites that have happened and the most active members. So it's really a reflection of what's happening at the community at the moment. So can anyone start a new project or a new activity? So in order to create new content on the Open Lab, you do need to be an Open Lab member. Uh, and to be a member, you need to be a member of the city tech community. So it's open to all faculty, staff, students, and alumni. Um, so anybody who has a city tech email can create an Open Lab account and then create all content. So is there uh, separate roles for teachers and uh, students? It's a great question. So when at the sign up process, you do we collect some metadata to help us sort and um, work our way through all of this information. There are separate roles for faculty and staff, faculty, staff, and then students. The difference primarily being that um, only faculty can create courses. And that's obviously for uh, important reasons in terms of the administration of the course. But other than that, we really have tried to democratize the space. There's not much differentiation. And actually, the Open Lab team made a conscious decision when it was creating these categories to not make a distinction between full-time faculty and part-time faculty. At CUNY, we have a very large percentage of part-time faculty, um, which is really uh, you know, has larger sort of structural implications, um, but we didn't want there to be sort of a two-tiered system between full-timer and part-timer, so we chose to make that um, one designation. Do you know anything what students like best about the Open Lab? Ah, what do they like best? What, what do you like best? Well, I'll tell you what I think students like best. Um, a few years ago, uh, the Open Lab underwent a major redesign to be mobile-friendly. And this was something that we, a request that we had gotten from our community and our members many, many times because the students are kind of constantly on the go and they really needed a space to work where they're on, on their subway commute. Um, and students actually, we found there's been some research done that students are actually working on their mobile devices or tablets quite commonly. And so the accessibility and the um, ability to work on mobile devices, I think something that students really enjoyed and we have a iterative model of development on the open lab where we get member requests and we work those into our development cycle and this is an example of that do you have any idea what's next what will be 2019 on the open lab well there's so much to say um i do just want to make a brief uh, exciting pitch um, and then maybe kayleen and jeremy might want to tell you a little bit about our oers on the open lab which are very exciting and a really long-standing um, robust uh, tradition at city tech but um, the Open Lab is actually going to be publicly released uh, this summer, in summer of 2018, through a partnership with um, Commons in a Box. Uh, it's uh, funded by a national endowment, um, I'm sorry, an NEH grant, a National Endowment for the Humanities uh, Digital Implementation Grant. We are partnering to make the Open Lab software freely available to any institution or group that wants to create an open platform for teaching and learning and community. So when we've talked about the Open Lab in the past, people have said, this is so wonderful, how do we get it? And we never really had a good answer until now, but now the, the code has always been free, but it hasn't come out sort of in a packaged way. And now partnering with Commons in a Box, which is um, an offshoot of the CUNY Academic Commons, another CUNY homegrown initiative, there will be an opportunity to out of the box install something like the Open Lab at your own institution fully customizable, um, supported with a suite of plugins, and we're, we're really excited to see this happen. Yes, that's exciting. Is it still a WordPress uh, core? Yes. Yes, yes it's ah, still based on the core software. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about resources. Um, so we've been doing a formal open educational resources program since the beginning of 2015. And when we put the program together, we decided to have all the work that faculty do to create OERs be housed on the Open Lab on a public site. Um, it was an intentional choice that we were really glad to make because we had the Open Lab already available at that time. And we wanted students to be able to access the course materials from either before they take the course and after so that there's kind of like 
an integration of lifelong learning and more resources for them as they move through their um, courses. Can you give us some examples of what's, uh, what's there already, what may be there in the future? Well, uh, one of the things that has been going on is the constant development of, of the Uh, the plugin architectures that, that we have there. Uh, as more people are using it, they are requesting more plugins. And uh, as a scientist, I have use for equations and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, maybe like a half year ago, I noticed that my equations looked a lot better because there was more call for it. They changed the plugins uh, for that. Uh, and it works out. It's, it's the, the students really like it because as uh, Jill had stated, um, it's extremely mobile responsive. So uh, I know for a fact that my course is used uh, on mobile devices uh, quite a bit. Sometimes I'll have them take it out in, in the middle of class uh, to, to work through exercises uh, as they also agree to incorporate more technologies into it. Like uh, I, I'm using a plugin called H5P, which helps me to create uh, my own uh, interactive material. Um, and so they've graciously uh, vetted some of that and uh, installed the plugin. So as as we evolve, um, I think the OER initiative has actually pushed uh, Open Lab quite a long ways from what it used to be when I first started using it. Because we got a lot of extra grant funding um, from New York State in fall 2017, we were able to direct part of our funds that we received at City Tech toward open lab development and toward partnering more closely with the whole open lab team. And so we've, I've been able to consult with the open lab team about different plugins, um, different themes, child themes, and customizations that will be really useful for Uh, both students and faculty in developing really customized, curated course materials. And just one last thing to add to that. Um, it, as Kayleen mentioned, we have this strong partnership between the library's OER initiatives and the Open Lab team. And I just wanted to mention that one of the special, unique things about the Open Lab, besides the Open Lab itself, is that we have a really community-focused approach to our development, but also to our pedagogy and our research. We really believe on the Open Lab in the value of openness, of teaching and working and learning out in the open. We believe that it's very important to think intentionally about the choices we make with technology. We believe that um, it's technology and tools don't make you good teachers and good thinkers or good students that it's really important to start with the values that we hold as educators and how technology can help us to facilitate those values. So um, that's really important and that happens with our partnerships around campus, not just with the library, but with a variety of stakeholders around campus. And I would be remiss to just mention that I'm one of the co-directors of the Open Lab focused on community and pedagogy, but I am just one representative of a very large team of um, co-directors, of developers, of students that have really over the years had an integral part in creating and shaping the Open Lab. So um, you can learn more about who those people are on the About and Credits page of the Open Lab, but I just wanted to share that uh, we really sort of uh, embody the spirit of community, and I think that's one of the things that makes the project so successful. Perfect ending for video. Was there anything else you'd like to add? So we'll send everyone to, to the homepage. Yeah, please. What's the URL again? Openlab.citytech.cuny.edu. Okay, go there, take a look, and maybe we will see an adaption in Germany. Thanks. Thank you so much.